Welcome to the AC Green Show. I'm AC Green. You know what we do. We're building a community of goal-oriented, success-driven individuals who recognize the value of coming together to do great things as we all build financial wealth and live holistic lives. So we're talking about Harriet Tubman and, you know, my shirt and the money and the dollar and the black dollar, keep the black dollar in the community and all that. But, you know, policy is a little different. So Joe Biden and the administration, they are considering, like President Barack Obama did, uh, making the $20 bill, Harriet Tubman 20. Under Trump, um, they tabled it or threw it off the table. Well, not quite off the table because Treasury um, still had it to where they can now just move it on over. So Joe Biden said he wants to move it over. So my question is this. That's why I have Dr. Kim Dulaney with me. Um, here's my question. Do we just go for symbolism or do we go for actuality? And then more specific to um, Kim, and she'll tell you why she's apropos to talk about these things because she's a, a historical, African historical deep digger. Um, I, <laughs> what do you all think that Harriet Tubman would think? Could wow. they have bought Harriet Tubman? And can they just buy you with symbolism? Or would Harriet Tubman want something more substantial for black people right now? Welcome to the AC Green Show, Kim Delaney, Dr. Kim Delaney. Hi, thank you for having me. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Uh, and as usual, you've gone right to the juggler of the event, uh, of the situation, <laughs> about uh, what would Harriet want. So Harriet Tubman in her life, you know, you know, she never even achieved a state of being financially secure. So when that uh, proposal first came up, I thought it was interesting that we would put her on money, something that she was denied her whole life, right? Something that had not been uh, a, a representative of her life, the money. And then it's almost like at first, I, when I heard it, I thought it was a joke. I said, is that like a joke? You know how you would taunt somebody? Like, <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna give you any money. Right. I'm gonna sell you and sell your family for money. And then I'm gonna put your face on money. It just, it sounds weird, you know? So, so for me, I would think, uh, I don't think that Harriet, I think that Harriet is deserving of being honored. That's a real thing. Harriet Tubman is a phenomenal woman. Uh, she's a phenomenal person. Unbelievable, some of the things she endured, you know, and that she was able to accomplish. Yeah. She is deserving of being honored, that's for sure. For sure. Honored in that way, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't think, I don't think so. I don't think I don't think that Harriet. Um, I'm just guessing, but if Harriet was alive, based on her unwillingness to um, to be okay with symbolism during her life, and be okay even with her being um, raised above the fray of things, she wasn't okay with that. Harriet ran right, and Harriet was okay, and Harriet went back to get other people. So there's a, this is a layered conversation. So when we talk about Harriet being okay with being on the dollar, I think Harriet will say, is everybody else okay? Right, are right. black people as a whole okay before we celebrate by putting me on the, uh, on the symbolism of cap, cap uh, 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 the symbolic representation of capitalism in this world? Are black people okay first before we put my face on that that has, that has served to oppress them? and keep them in bondage, I don't think Harriet would be okay with that. I just don't because, and where do I, how do I get that? It's not a, it's not a, a gross extrapolation when I say that Harriet went to freedom. She was free. She was, she successfully freed herself. Then she went back. Then she went back again. She in fact went back 19 times. So Harriet isn't one, wasn't one, according to her life and the record of her life, she wasn't one who achieved success for herself while other people were yet in bondage. She wasn't okay with that. In fact, even after the Civil War, she served as a spy in the war. After the Civil War, she spent her life working for poor people who had been enslaved. So just not on the dollar, not on the, not on the dollar. The dollar represents gross capitalism in America. It represents gross inequity in America. I don't I don't see how that's honoring Harriet to put her and, on the dollar. I think she deserves to be honored though. And, and and I agree in that, you know, when we talk about bondage, 
you know, Harriet slaves were a part of the the um, the economic metrics of the country. You know, yeah. that's how the country made money. That's how land owners and business owners made money. So mm -hmm. just to put her image or a black image or a popular yeah. black image or yeah. historic black image on the money, it's really more usury if you if you really want to yeah. think about it. Yeah, it's to exploit who she is. It's the it's that whole what we like to call black skin effort, right? So you want to put black color, black skin, all of this uh, stuff, but at the core of it, there's no there's no meat to it to what you're doing, right? So you didn't change policy. If you changed economic policies in order to um, shore up the the in, in, in a, inefficiencies, the deficiencies that people have, then put Harry on the dollar. Yeah. Once you balance it out. But if you, if you, if I'm poor and the bulk of the people that Harriet worked, descendants of people that Harriet worked for free are still in bondage, Harriet should not be on that dollar. She but, should not. But you know, I have a great idea. What if the government, and I mean, of course, they're not going to listen to me, <laughs> but what if the government <laughs> mm -hmm. did a reparation? And just called it the Harriet Tubman reparation. Do you think that she would rather have a Harriet Tubman reparation? In other words, the, yeah. the reparations bill that's moving twenty trillion dollars to Black folks. Mm. Would she rather have that or just the symbolism of her picture on a twenty dollar bill? Wow! Why'd you do that? Once again, you—you. You, I mean, this would be the answer to that question. Absolutely, the reparations. Something substantive. Again, again. She could have sat on her laurels and, and wherever she was and when she went free. And then she could have been the sign that Blacks could have freedom. People of African descent, they can achieve freedom if they want. Look at Harriet. Harriet didn't do that. She risked her life to go back and pull others up. She used her whole life to fight for equality for people of African descent in America. So, I, I mean, you can't convince me that Harriet would uh would would be okay with her just being lifted up being honored while the problems yet remain because that's not what she did again i say we have to look at what she did with her life that's not what she did now and let's look at this harriet we got to know a little bit about harriet we have to know that harriet you know one time harriet said she was beat five times before even before it was breakfast time harriet was hit in the head with a leaded weight because she, this, uh, uh, listen, I'm gonna stick with our core concept. Harriet was hit in the head with a lead weight because she wouldn't help to capture a runaway slave that was in her presence. And she had been commanded to help hold him. She knew the consequences of that, of not doing, the, doing what these people said. So Harriet is not one to be used in oppressive structures, she's not. She was right there. If, if, if the boss said, hold him, help me hold this man down, and Harriet refused, she knew the punishment behind that. And then she was hit in the head with a lead weight, which is why she had, you know, how they uh, showed, even in the movie, which I thought was pretty good, but they showed how she had blackouts and she yeah. had these dreams. That came, she wasn't born with that. That came because she was hit in the head with a weight right. because she wouldn't victimize another person of African descent. So Harriet is not, she's not, she, her life demonstrates that she was not willing to be used as your token Negro, as your token symbol of success, or uh, as your tool to further oppress and help hold captive people. She wasn't willing to be used in that way because she didn't, she, now, and listen, listen to this, she would have been, the average person, after you hit in the head and you're having these horrible headaches mm -hmm. and all of these things, those headaches later in her life made her have to have brain surgery because this all got so bad. But early in her life, she had definite problems because of being hit in the head with that weight. But guess what she did? Ran away anyway. Guess mm -hmm. what she did? Went back and got more people. Guess what she did again? Went back and got more people. Guess what she did after the fugitive slave law came that said, even if you get to a free place, the law says you have to return the people. So now that makes it extremely dangerous and challenging. Harriet went back some more. 
she went back. She continued to go back. So we can't we can't treat Harriet like a punk. We can't right. treat Harriet like Harriet uh, is a token. We can't treat Harriet like anybody who's willing to compromise, right? Without full delivery of freedom and equity to people, because that's not who Harriet was. That's right. You know what I want you to do is tell everybody, you know, mm -hmm. um, your background, so they understand the significance of me having you talk about this. I'll talk about okay. her. She's a professor, everybody. Yeah, I'm a professor of African American studies. Uh, I'm also the director. I'm a professor of African American studies at Chicago State University. I'm also a director of education and programs for the Sabo Museum. And so that's, uh, I think those are uh, rich and powerful places to work. Chicago State, I was mentored by Dr. Barley McSwine over there. He's a genius. Uh, he's uh, uh, deceased now, but he was actually absolutely brilliant. And then Hakeem Madabuti, Professor Madabuti, I went to uh, the writing program over there because of him. He started Third World Press. So it's rich and steeped in legacy. I greatly respect legacy. And then DuSable Museum, started by Margaret Burroughs. This is the 60th anniversary of that museum. Wow. Margaret Burroughs was a Harriet of her time. Margaret Absolutely. Burroughs, you know, she was an artist. She was an educator. I mean, a poet. You can't, I mean, these are this this these are the the, the, the footsteps that we stand in, and so I I would be uh, 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 diligent in my duties if I just went along to get along and say, yeah. oh yeah, let's just be grateful for something. Let's just be grateful we got something. No, that's not that's not where I come from. That's not what these people who risk their lives risk their financial security, right? They could have gone on to glory and and, and their with their wealth and lived just high off the hog, as they say, <laughs> you know, yeah. they could have did that. They didn't. They kept fighting for equality. And in that vein, uh, that's that's how I do my work. And that's 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 what I know Harriet would have wanted because that's what Harriet did. And, and look at this. So now we're in 2021. Do um, mm -hmm. you think that it is the lack of understanding, historical understanding um, that makes other Black folks, I'm not really going to deal with how other white folks um, mm -hmm. think about it because they have an objective. And uh, that's what a lot of black folks don't get is that the white systems have objectives for celebrating you yeah. in most cases, not out of the pure goodness of their heart. All right. Mm -hmm. They have a culture too. They can celebrate that. But usury is how they have always seen us. I mean, still in the constitution, yeah. black folks are three fifths of a human being. So mm -hmm. using us um, for labor and free labor and, and one way or another, they got to get more sophisticated in their usury, yeah. of course, because we catch on and all those things. But do you think that we really need, and I know your answer. <laughs> yeah, do we really need to go deeper and understand who we are yeah. and, and revisit some things so that we won't get used by a mm -hmm. system that wants to only give you symbolism, a sign yeah. on the street or a yeah. street sign or something yeah. on the bill without ever giving you the repair and the respect that you deserve for building a nation? Wow. So listen, this is what's so powerful about what you described. And that is that we are, if we haven't studied this thing in a holistic way, not just history, you know, I'm not a historian proper. So historians know the dates when, ha when things happen. I'm a black studies scholar. That's a little bit different. Black studies scholar looks at the whole in the contextualization. So we look at black psychology, black sociology, black economics, the black education and the history and the facts and things like that. All of those things come together to inform our analysis, right? They're supposed to. Now they're different factions. So somebody's a black historian, they do that very well. I need them. They have the information. My mind can't even remember all of those details, right? I think that's a gift and that's a beautiful thing. Uh, we have other people who might know this aspect of it. It's beautiful. We need all of those things. I am a cultural critic, cultural critic. So it, I look at all of those things and my brain can only uh, or best recognizes core concepts, right? So when we're looking at how we move forward, we have to look at what happened before, right? One of my areas especially is identity construction. So not just of individuals, but of a, a people as a whole. So how do we construct our identities and how do we move differently than we did before? That really matters, right? 
somebody, depending on people's level of information and access to uh, study and systems, everybody's going to have a different perspective. So my cousin once told me when I first uh, said I was majoring in African-American studies, he said, why are you going to do that? You already know how to be black. You wake up black every day. <laughs> and it, I, that has stuck with me throughout because that's what people think African-American studies is. People always say, you think you're black is blacker than everybody. I never said that. What I'm trying to tell you is anything that I want to fully understand, I have to commit time to studying it. I'm not just, I'm not just understand the scope of womanhood because I woke up with that particular part. That's not what that does. You know, I understand things I have to do, surface things, but if I want to understand my place in the world, uh, historically how I've been treated, the psychology behind it, I have to study it, right? With people who put in that work, with people who can nav navigate that exploration of knowledge. That's the same thing for Black studies. I don't know why people won't respect that. You have to navigate that space with people who have committed their lives to navigating that space in that way, in a deep way that can help us to move forward. If we don't, AC, you know what? If we don't, we, we roll in a circle. We go back. We've, we've been here before. This isn't a new moment. We've been here before. There's a new tool in the, in the, the internet and technology. There's a new tool, right? That we can use. We've been here before, though, uh, if we look at the core concepts. When you look at the civil rights movement, they brought attention to um, our abuse. Black Lives Matter bringing, is bringing attention to our abuse, and they're doing that in a mighty way. We shouldn't look for Black Lives Matter to handle the whole of correcting the situation. That I don't know why we would do that. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter is calling attention to it, and they've done an awesome, awesome job of calling attention to it. Now, where are where are our policymakers? Where are, are our think tanks who think through the problems and think of what the solutions are? That where we're working to uh, establish that and work on that, right? Because people all over have individual little think tanks. You and I chatted up. That's a think tank in essence. But we want to pull all of those things together and have these conversations where we look at where we have deliberations and we look at all the problems and the solutions, right? We don't want to just put black face on it. We don't want to just say, put a black person in charge. You right. know, like if it's at your job and you say, well, you just put a black person in charge. Well, what does that black person believe? What does that black person think should be, what, you know, what's the ideological grounding behind the decisions they're going to make? It's not black face we try to put in. Black is bigger than a color of skin. That's not it. We're talking about a culture, right? In a way of life, in a way. That, so the problem solving, I say, comes with understanding the problem and, and then understanding the African-centered perspective. If not, it doesn't have to be exactly like what somebody did, uh, you know, a thousand years ago. Not that. But do you understand the African center core perspective that can move, that can respect our ways of understanding, our ways of existing, and move us towards equality, right? And have us be um, melded into, let me say this, Reverend Wright says, he says there's a difference in um, what, uh, uh, desegregation and integration. Those aren't the same things. People use them as they are. Desegregation means I can't make you separate. Integration is we're working together, man. Blend it in. Like you accept me, right? And blend it in. And, and what I say is important and what you say is important. Desegregation means you just got to let me in the room. <laughs> you don't have to honor my perspective or anything right. that attends to me. You just got to let me in. Those are different things, right? So we're looking for... Uh, of cultural diversity in a way that integrates um, holistically who we are and who everybody is into this broader picture and this broader landscape of America. So, so look at this. So now, and I'm not gonna keep you too much longer, but look at this. I, I, you, you, you just made me think. Now, you know, one great inspiration, you know, kind of leads to another great, you know, mm -hmm. that energy happens, and I'm feeling it. So look at this. Now I'm going somewhere with this. Okay. So now, 
You heard what you just said. So I'm going to, I got to hit you with this because people Uh-oh. are going to be watching this. And, and I know, I know some of this, some of this thought may, may come out. So all of these corporate CEOs, I've been noticing, they've been loving on black folks a whole lot in the last six, mm. eight months. A lot of CEOs becoming, you know, they put them in place. They black and this one is black and this one is black yeah. and female. And yeah. this one is this and that and all that. Still, you know, we, we applaud that. Um, yeah. But could it be a part of the same symbolism? So here's where I'm going. Here's where I'm going. Um, black In Black History 2021, Uh-oh. I'm going to ask this Uh-oh. professor this question. Because nobody could know the pure answer because we we were not in his mind. Mm -hmm. But it brought to mind something that was said and could he have been so prophetic that he Mm -hmm. was seeing some part of this day that symbolism Mm -hmm. may become the way the white structure is going to try to pay black people back. And could Mm -hmm. Dr. Martin Luther King had another true holistic meaning Mm -hmm. when he said that we should be judged not by the color of our skin, but by mm. the content of our character. Because yeah. if I told most of you right now that, hey, we ought to be accepting of Clarence Thomas because he's a black skinned man, what would well, you think? Wow. Well, I, I'll say to that, that um, absolutely we have to be judged by the content of our character instead of the color of our skin, but we got to get the skin thing out of the way first. Even if you're black. So that means yeah. that means okay, well we got yeah. we got a black judge, but it's Clarence Thomas. Are we good with that? What does we got he a black do? secretary That's of state, but it's Connolly Listen, for rights. Are what, we good what with that? What does he believe? What does he because what I'm telling you is black skinned, it's not enough to speak for the black collective experience. That's a different thing. So people say, Well, I'm black, you're not black in the New York, you're black. It's not that. Nobody's saying you're not black. I'm saying you can't speak for the black collective if you don't understand the way the collective uh, thinks, processes information, is punished by your thoughts and what you uh, bring forth or uh, or is rewarded by that. If you don't understand your effect and the effect of your actions and your thoughts on the collective, then you shouldn't speak for me. You get what I'm saying? Imagine we're all in a room and we're talking about uh, uh, whatever the topic is, you know, other topics. It's a general basic concept that people can understand. I can be of the, I can live on your block, and but I can't be the block club leader if I don't engage in the community at all. I drive in my driveway, go in my house, go back to my, wherever I participate in sports in the suburbs and do that and all that. And I simply live on the block. But I'm on the block, but I'm not of the block. Then I cannot speak. I cannot speak for the block and say we don't need that. Oh no, we don't need that. <laughs> you know, I can be. I can go to you all fight for something on the block, and I go say, for instance, this. And I, I'm, this just made me think of something. My house has a driveway. My block, the average house, doesn't have a driveway. We went to speak to the local school because the high school students were parking on and taking up people's spots. And they said, use your own parking lot for your drive. Well, I could have went in a meeting. That issue did not affect my life. I drive in and drive into my driveway. It doesn't affect my life. I could fit three cars in my driveway without a problem. I didn't need to be in on that. I, I, when they came to me, I went with them. That's not my itch. I just say, hey, strike that down. I rather talk about, uh, you know, I can't, I can't speak about, and I have to be honest with myself. I can't speak about that not being a need because it doesn't affect me. No, I can't do that. So when I went in that meeting, I didn't take the lead on that. I listened and let them, and I supported it because it benefited the collective. And so I'm saying, if I'm aware of the pains of the collective, of how what we're fighting for or they're pushing for with the collective, then they might could have told me to make the spill and they give me all of their concerns. I didn't even know some of those things they see when they start saying, yeah, and then they leave trash. And then I, you know, then I hear them cursing and then, yeah, I don't know that. I'm not, I'm in the back of my house. My car is secure. I'm not thinking about, and then somebody says, my went in the car and took change. I didn't know those things because it hadn't affected me in the way. And I have to be aware of that. What is affecting the collective? 
All right. If so, I'm not connected to it, then I shouldn't speak for it. Okay. So now, and this is the last thing we're going to end right here, and I'm going to let you give your, your response mm -hmm. to it. So in that way, there will be millions upon millions, untold numbers of young girls and teenagers that are going to, inappropriately so, follow mm -hmm. in the footsteps of our new vice president, um, yeah. Kamala Harris. That's going to happen, yeah. and it should That's happen. happen. Um, they're going to do that because whether she is culturally or historically or genetically black, Negro, black, she is of the hue that re relates to those young girls. Mm. Uh, but the question for you, does Kamala Harris, because she did not have, she went to a black school, but you mm -hmm. that looking at her history, that does not mean that she had a quote unquote black experience, like a Harriet Tubman connected kind of experience mm -hmm. because that wasn't her full culture that way. Um, mm -hmm. Does she have an obligation now that she's in the position of leadership and and, um, and really con power and control in a lot of ways mm -hmm. and influence over young girls? Does she have an obligation to, mm -hmm. to go deeper in her study and then to make sure that what she says reflects who she's representing? Well, let me say, Absolutely. And I'm so hopeful about this uh, administration with Kamala Harris. I'm not um, fantasy hopeful, but I'm hopeful that she will engage, right? And that she has a sensitivity towards her. So yes. I don't know that she, I, I don't know that I would say that she didn't have Black experience because. Well, no, she did. She definitely did. Yeah, she did. So anybody born black in America has had a piece That's of That's right, because you got that color. <laughs> for, for sure. So I would say I'm hopeful that um, she will extend, you know, somebody went to high school with us as uh, was friends with her in college and things like that. I've seen the pictures. I'm hopeful. And I know other people who know her. So um, we have to be careful to not expect miracles and holistic uh, um, greatness from somebody, from an individual, right? I'm sure Harriet Tubman had some flaws that didn't make it to the history book. I'm sure that's what him, being human is. But that's why Harriet we Harriet Tubman could have liked white men. Stop. I'm Ooh, just kidding. I'm that. just kidding. I <laughs> but, don't know that. I but wasn't I, there. But I don't know about that. But I do know that it is our responsibility to shore up any deficits she might have by assisting her and by being diligent and putting the pressure on the administration Absolutely. she represents, not the people she represents, the administration Absolutely. and the history of that of Absolutely. that position, putting the pressure on so that we continue this push for equality. It's not up to her to go wave the magic wand. It's up to us to yes. create the pressure yes. that enables her to say there is a warrant and a demand for this chain, and here's how we do it. That, so in that way, I would like to assist uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Vice President Harris. I would like to assist her, and I would like to uh, ask that everybody else respect her in a way. That's respect. Respect is not that I'm sitting here like, oh, look at AC, he's so great. Oh, look at Kim Blaine, she's so great. That's not respecting me. If you want to make me function to my capacity and help me be my best self, then you too will hold hold my feet to the fire. Absolutely. And not, not just in criticism, but in support in ways that make me better. That you not you won't just say what I did wrong. You'll say, here's how I'm gonna yes. help you do this differently. Absolutely. And I wanna love her in that way. I yes. want us to love her. We didn't love, we didn't love. Barack Obama in that way. No, we didn't. And that, didn't. that was a major mistake that we made too. That was a major mistake. I want us to love her in a way that helps her to function at her capacity, right? Yes. I want us to give that chance, right? And that's the only way we can affect real change. And then we, and then what we get to see is what she does with it. Yes. When we say, well, here it is. And here, we got these troops of millions coming behind to support Come you. On. Then let's see what if you say, well, no, don't do that. <laughs> you know? Or if you say, or if you're gonna affect change, then then we could judge you. Then and, we could judge you. And, and she needs to be able to, and, and like you're saying, she needs to be able to, to point over there and say, hey, I gotta make a move. Absolutely. There, right there, telling me I gotta make a move. She needs <laughs> that. Every political, you know, um yeah. when Kennedy, yeah. when Kennedy got killed. Um, who was that? Johnson, right? Johnson, okay. Lyndon Johnson told Dr. King, 
Hey, absolutely, make Johnson do said that. That's make right. me do it. Make me do it. And listen, it's no different than you. You've run things. When you run things, you say, "Hey, like if I'm if I'm at the university and the students have a problem with something, I say I could suggest it, but the administration doesn't won't think it's real until the students." are complaining saying, we demand X, Y, Z. You know, black studies, this field I work in, it wasn't, nobody said, oh, I think it's time to get in. You know, it was born during the black power movement in 1968, right? Where the students protested and said, we demand to be taught about ourselves. Nobody gifted that to us. People fought for that. You have to put that demand there. And then people have to attend to the demand, right? So that's, that's what we have to do. And that's what we have to understand that that's our responsibility. We're supposed to do that. Don't, so, don't chop down people who put pressure and say, well, why do you say that? No, you want them to put pressure. You yes. want it to be a valid uh, cr criticism yes. and a valid push, but you want pressure. You want it. We're, you gotta have you it. want it. You, that's what you're supposed to do. We welcome it. We welcome it. We want to make this thing the best it can be. We don't want to wake up the most disturbing thing is most of the stuff I talk about, especially during Black History Month, you know, I wish I drank. I wish I was a drinker. I wish I was something. Because you need to escape behind the reality of looking at the fact that it's a hundred years later. And we're talking about years later. the same thing. Same thing. We have oh, the same facts. I mean, that is when you dig into that and then you flush it out and you look at all these people who sacrificed their lives and compromised in this way. And then all for us to just relax and not pick up the mantle and push, 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 and just relax and say, okay, well, they gave us a face on the dollar bill, so we've arrived. We what? Good. <laughs> That's we, disturbing, and it makes we, you sad. It'll drive you to drink. We got us a good Democrat in the White House. Let's, 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 go, on back, go, let's go on back to sleep. Let, they got it. No. <laughs> None and of that. We, we can't do it. And guess what? That's what's going to happen. 100 years from now, our children are going to blame us. Yeah. When you look at this history and you dig into it and you uncover the fact that, okay, you had already seen that. So what were you uh, like insane insanity, doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results, right? Doing it over and over, expecting different results. Our children are going to say, were you, were you insane? Were, were our ancestors insane? Like, why they do that again? They had already, and they had books and films and record that it had happened before. So why'd they do the exact same thing again? And I, I don't know what the answer would be, right? Yeah. So I'm trying to work towards that uh, so we don't have to have that question arrive. They'll see the effort. We, we can see clearly what the civil rights movement did and how they pushed. We can see clearly. And then they, it resulted in some laws changing. That's effective. People often say, well, it was, it was very effective. It, they, they sought to change the laws and that's what they did. It wasn't effective in eradicating racism, no. But it changed some laws. And now we're supposed to pick that up and give teeth to those laws and hold people accountable, right? And so we have to train people to, to lawyers. We have to train people, educators. We have to train people to now make something out of these things, right? And in the meantime, we have to also be doing for self so that that's not our only obligation. That's what the Black Panther Party did, where we're pushing, we're gonna do for self, while we also try to get what we're supposed to get from over there, you know? I do, I do. Yeah. Kim, I thank you. Thank you, thank Black you for History having me. Month. Yeah, you, you, you always, um, just there's a trove of information and that's what we need. We need people, we need a lot of people like you that are willing to give up themselves like you do. Tell everybody how they can reach you on social media. Well, on social media, you can reach me at uh, Kim Delaney, Kim L. Delaney on Facebook. I have a couple of websites, but I don't look at them. <laughs> so, so go to Kim L. Delaney uh, on Facebook and contact me there. Kim L. Do on Instagram and uh, Twitter. You can reach me in those places. And thank you for the work that you do. You know, I, I know you know the answers. I appreciate the conversation though, that we could dig in and kind of flower it out for people to see what's at the root of things that you say, why we say them, why we come to those positions. So I appreciate the work you do. It's really, it's really a ministry in Thank the vein you. of your, in the vein of your, your father. It's, a, it's really a ministry. <laughs> yeah. 
Thank you very, very much. You all listen. Thank you, uh, Kim. I really appreciate um, that. And then you being uh, with us, because that's the whole idea is that we start to critically think about some things that we really just been letting pass us. And we can't do that because if we don't critically think about it, we cannot pass on information to our children. Therefore, like you said earlier, we're going to repeat the same thing. All right, everybody. So um, look, uh, make sure you subscribe to the video and um, well, subscribe to the channel, then like the video and um, share the video, by the way. Um, also make sure you go to the website if you need to, the AC Gray Show. Dot com. It's all about community. So we're giving to each other. You're my sister, my brother, and I love you. When you rise, I rise too. Amen. I share. It's all about community. So we're giving to each other. See free.